Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's lecture about hepatobiliary scintigraphy. Hepatobiliary scintigraphy is a part of GI scintigraphy that includes also gastric emptying, GI bleeding, meckles, and hepatic and splenic scintigraphy. The other parts of GI scintigraphy we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, this is a comprehensive list of hepatobiliary indications. However, this is rather optimistic from our colleagues in Society of Nuclear Medicine. So the typical questions and the typical problems that we deal with include uh, questions whether the patient has acute cholecystitis, chronic cholecystitis, postoperative leak, and sphincter or body spasm or dysfunction. And the typical problems that we deal with uh, in getting the scans done is should the patient be fasting, how long, how long should be the delayed images, what to do when the liver cannot make bile with ele given elevated bilirubin, and what to do with morphine because, let's face it, our patients like morphine. Who wouldn't? So this is your typical appearance of a normal hepatobiliary scan, and these are the simple test questions that you may encounter on boards. So prior to performing this test, should the patient be fasting for 2 hours, 6 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours? Should we just give syncolite or should we just wait until somebody else is in service? Uh, what is the typical dose? Half a millicurie, 4 millicuries, 12 millicuries, or 32 millicuries? And another perpetual question is what to do if we see gallbladder but do not see bowel? Can we stop or do we need to wait for small bowel? So let's try to answer all of those questions today. So a normal hepatobiliary scan should show really quick trace of clearance from the blood pool into the liver. So uh, relatively quickly, we should no longer see the heart or the blood pool. As you see in these images, we see faint heart above the left lobe on image one, maybe two, and then the heart disappears. Then subsequently during the first hour, we should see the bile ducts, gallbladder, and small bowel. If we see gallbladder, that essentially automatically implies that both CBD and cystic ducts are patent with a very, very high degree of certainty. So really, at that point, the study can be terminated. In routine circumstances, we do not need to see small bowel. If the patient was fasting and had syncolite pretreatment that completely emptied the gallbladder before the scan, there will be preferential flow of bile into the gallbladder for at least a couple of hours. So we should not expect to see a small bowel for a few hours at least, if the individual is normal, of course. Okay, so let's look at this case. Is this hepatobiliary scan normal? So in this case, images are performed with uh, five minutes per frame to make it easier to fit on the screen. And we see quick gallbladder visualization, but no visualization of small bowel. So is this normal or not? Well, I'm sure all of you got the right answer, and the scan is abnormal. There is a cold defect in the liver, which is very abnormal. So this patient had hepatocellular carcinoma, and HCC or other liver masses will not be able to make bile, so therefore will appear as cold defects on HIDA scan. The only exception to that rule will be focal nodular hyperplasia, which will be super bright. And until EOVIST came... Um, on board for the MRI, we actually use, used to use hepatobiliary scintigraphy for, uh, scintigraphy for definitive diagnosis of FNH. It would be the brightest thing on the scan ever. Okay, the two radiopharmaceuticals that we typically use for hepatobiliary scintigraphy is actually not highly anymore, although all of us keep using that term. The two ones that are in common use are technetium-99M disophenin and technetium-99M membrophenin. Membrophenin is significantly preferred, particularly in cases of liver dysfunction, because it has much better excretion. So in routine use, us and everybody else uses membrophenin. The typical dose is 3 to 5 millicures. In certain circumstances, we can inject an additional couple millicures if liver cleared all of the activity and we're obtaining delayed images. In kids, of course, uh, the dosing should be based on the weight, if we perform this in kids. Uh, for the purposes of imaging, the recommended protocol is to use a large field of view gamma camera with a low energy all purpose or high resolution collimator. Personally, I do not like high resolution collimators because even though they decrease noise, they also significantly decrease counts. 
uh, dynamic acquisition should be performed with one frame per minute for 60 minutes. Although some institutions uh, acquire it with five minutes per frame to generate fewer images. If we see the goal bother, uh, we can stop the imaging because that essentially automatically implies, implies patency of both CBD and cystic duct. In certain circumstances, it may be reasonable to uh, wait until the small bowel will seen, although personally, I vastly prefer MRCP to clear the CBD rather than rely on the hepatobiliary scan. If the gallbladder is not seen within 60 minutes, then uh, we should perform a delayed images. Uh, the delay should be three to four hours, or alternatively, we can administer morphine, and then we can do delayed images for 30 or 60 minutes, which is much faster, but in usual practical reality, almost always we obtain delayed images without morphine. In patients with hepatic dysfunction, it would be reasonable to wait up to 24 hours to visualize gallbladder. If the patient has any concern for biliary leak, uh, the patient should be imaged for two to four hours dynamically if the patient is able to tolerate. It's also really important to image any surgical drains and bags. If the patient has wounds, the dressings should be taken off and imaged separately. Morphine does make life much, much simpler. The standard dose is two milligrams, although this can be uh, done with weight-based protocols. The morphine is administered over two to three minutes, and the theory is it induces this spasm of sphincter of Adi, so we only really need to uh, image the patients for 30 to 60 minutes rather than wait three to four hours. If the liver has cleared all of the tracer into the small bowel, it may be reasonable to give additional two millicures prior to morphine administration. The same goes true for obtaining delayed images if at 60 minutes liver is essentially absent. Uh, to answer the fasting question, the protocol generally recommends a minimum of two hours of fasting and preferably at least six hours of fasting. Now, longer is not necessarily better. The patients that fast over 24 hours, the gallbladder becomes completely filled with bile and may not fill uh, during the hepatobiliary scintigraphy. So in general, the sweet zone is somewhere around two to six hours. All the following that logic, uh, why can't we uh, just give a patient a meal, have the gallbladder empty, and then um, uh, do the images? Uh, this is the question that I've never been able to answer myself in practical reality, so I stick to the recommended two to six hours. If the patients had opiates, the guidelines recommend weight. However, personally, I don't subscribe to that because we use... Uh, morphine to speed up uh, the delayed images. So if the patient had opiates, I think it is entirely reasonable to proceed with hepatobiliary scan. And in fact, that may obviate the need to, for, to have additional delayed images. Okay, so let's look at this patient. So uh, images acquired with five minutes per frame. So if we look at the images on the left, uh, we do not see gallbladder at 60 minutes, and the patient is given morphine, and additional 30 minutes of imaging is performed. So, does this patient have cholecystitis? Yes or no? I'll give you a couple of seconds to decide. And the answer is probably not. This patient had prolonged fasting in ICU so that the gallbladder was filled with bile. <coughs> And that's, and that's what's probably caused <clears throat> non-visualization of the gallbladder. The patient actually declined having surgery or any interventions and then quickly improved and was discharged from ICU within 48 hours with resolution of all symptoms. And uh, the symptoms were actually attributed to urosepsis, not gallbladder disease. And then the patient actually went on to have a follow-up outpatient hepatobiliary skin with appropriate fasting instructions and the gallbladder filled rather quickly. So again, to summarize, uh, the typical fasting should be two to six hours. Fasting for long periods of time can result in filling of the gallbladder and it will be not visualized. So in this particular case, uh, in general, we will recommend giving syncolite to the patient to empty the gallbladder prior to the scan. Typical dose of technetium 99 
Dicefenin or Mimbrofenin. Mimbrofenin is preferred, is three to five millicuries. Typical protocol is one frame per minute for 60 frames and additional delayed images of three to four hours or th 30 to 60 minutes if the patient is given morphine. The study can be stopped when the gallbladder is seen. However, in general, the technologist will just image for 60 minutes. Additional oblique images, right lateral or uh, other oblique images may be quite helpful to confirm that we see gallbladder and not bowel. So once we see gallbladder, CBD obstruction essentially is excluded. Okay, so let's look at some clinical cases. So we have a CAT scan where the gallbladder looks completely normal. Uh, we see a gallbladder without wall thickening. Uh, we see some stones. And the technologist tells us that the patient is mildly tender. So is this acute cholecystitis? Yes or no? Well, the answer is obvious. Of course, we should be doing a hepatobiliary scan. And this patient has no acute cholecystitis. We see quick filling of the gallbladder. So as always, this is not an uncommon situation in the emergency department. But first we do CT, then we follow it with an ultrasound, and then we have no idea what to do with results. So we do a hepatobiliary scan. Okay, how about this case? So we have uh, at the top uh, images of hepatobiliary scan, uh, where at 60 minutes we see most of the tracer has cleared, but we do not see gallbladder. On CT, we see contracted gallbladder with multiple stones inside. So what are the options at this point? A, two hour delay, B, three to four hour delay, C, 24 hour delay, D, morphine plus one hour delay, E, give syncolite, or F, wait until vision is covering. I personally vote for F. And uh, in this case, the correct answer was either uh, four hour delay or morphine administration with additional 30 to 60 minutes of imaging. So in this particular case, we chose to do four hour delay and then we see faint visualization of the gallbladder. So this patient does not have acute cholecystitis, which should have been obvious just from the CT scan because inherently cholecystitis is an obstructive process. So the gallbladder should not be distended. It should definitely not be collapsed. In patients with gallbladder dysfunction, sometimes we will uh, in patients with liver dysfunction, we, we can wait longer than four hours, and up to 24 hours is reasonable. Okay, so this is an example of uh, delayed images not being so easy to interpret. So in the left upper quadrant of the image, we see early images where in the first six minutes, we see prompt tracer clearance from the blood pool. And then images in the right upper quadrant, we can see uh, at the end of 60 minutes, most of the tracer is in the biliary system or bowel. However, we don't really see gallbladder very well. Or maybe we see it very faintly, not clear. So we choose to perform four hour delayed images. And when we look at these images, we can actually see that essentially all of the tracers in the bowel. So it becomes really difficult to identify whether we see gallbladder or not. So right lateral images, or oblique images can be quite helpful. So in this case, we decided that indeed we see the gallbladder, so the patient does not have acute cholecystitis. In these circumstances, uh, we could have considered giving additional two millicuries of uh, tracer uh, before doing the delayed images, or in the worst case scenario, right after the delayed images and repeat the delayed images so we can see the liver outline. Okay, this is another uh, example, so we have a patient that came into the ED originally. Uh, we did an ultrasound, uh, images on the left, we see uh, a bunch of stones in the gallbladder. The patient was discharged from the gallbladder and came day five days later. But the gallbladder looks the same where we see stones. Uh, technologists reported negative Murphy sign, however, tenderness over the gallbladder area. And again, this is something I have seen quite a bit from technologists at our institution and elsewhere. Negative Murphy, but tender. I still have no idea what to do with this, but I'm sure everybody in the room has come up with the right answer, which is, well, of course, it is to perform hepatobiliary scan. And we see images on the left during the first hour and images in the right lower quadrant of additional four hour delay. And the answer is acute cholecystitis. The gallbladder is not visualized at one hour or four hours. 
And this case, again, underscores why Hibata Bellary scans can continue to be the gold standard. Uh, the gold bladder appearance did not change over five days in ultrasound, so my personal guess would have been no cholecystitis because I would have expected to see gold bladder wall thickening and adjacent fluid over five days. Yet, hepatobiliary skin was clear and the patient went on to have surgery. Okay, this is another example where we see an ultrasound and we uh, CT, see CT images where we see stones, gold bladder wall thickening, but absolutely no stranding around the gold bladder. So this, is this acute cholecystitis or not? Well, and again, since this is a nuclear medicine lecture, the answer is to perform the nuclear medicine hepatobiliary scan. So these are the images for the first hour. And we still can't answer the question because we do not see the gallbladder. So what do we need to do? We need to do additional delayed images. So this is a five hour delay. Uh, and the tracer has cleared from the liver. So the answer is acute cholecystitis. The gallbladder is not visualized on the delayed images. So this patient went on to have a surgical intervention. Okay. Another case, now we have the trifecta of MRI, CT, and ultrasound. Uh, gallbladder looks actually fairly and remarkable on CT and MRI, except the gallstones. There's no adjacent inflammatory changes. It does look, however, quite ugly on ultrasound with this homogeneous internal echoes. So I suppose this could be sludge or could be hemorrhage into the lumen. So cholecystitis or no? And the answer is, of course, to perform a hepatobiliary scan. And at the first hour, we do not see the gallbladder. So we choose to perform delayed images at four hours. So look at this and decide for yourself, acute cholecystitis or no? And the answer is yes, acute cholecystitis. We do not see gallbladder at four hours. And this patient went on to have a percutaneous drainage. We see a contrast injection into the gallbladder lumen and no opacification of the CBD. So indeed, uh, cystic duct was obstructed with acute cholecystitis and those low level internal echoes probably represented hemorrhage inside the lumen. Okay. Another case where we have ultrasound showing stones, where we have CT again showing stones and maybe some gallbladder wall thickening, maybe some questionable stranding around it, but not terribly impressive. So again, the question is, is this acute cholecystitis or not? Again, notice that in all of these cases, we tend to do CT and ultrasound first, and only then we decide to perform hepatobiliary scintigraphy. And we see that at one hour, uh, the tracer pacifies the CBD uh, liver and bowel, no gallbladder. So we choose to perform additional delayed images. And the answer is acute cholecystitis. We do not see gallbladder at four hours. Again, this patient went on to have percutaneous drainage. Uh, contrast injection pacifies the gallbladder, but there is no cystic duct or CBD opacification confirming that this patient has obstruction with acute cholecystitis. Okay, so in summary, acute cholecystitis can be diagnosed if the gallbladder is not visualized on three to four hour delayed images or additional 30 to 60 minutes after morphine. Given difficulties in morphine administration, uh, since we, uh, it's relatively difficult for us to do it ourselves, in general, we just do delayed images, although morphine can significantly speed up the process. Okay, chronic cholecystitis. Now, this is a not uncommonly mentioned term, but it is an extremely, extremely vague entity. Uh, I think Predominantly, it exists in pathologists' mind and maybe in surgeons' minds as an explanation for pain. On imaging, the diagnosis is highly questionable. Uh, based on the guidelines in the literature, the chronic cholecystitis can be suggested if the gallbladder is not seen at one hour, but is seen on three to four hour delayed images. And also when we see bowel before we see uh, gallbladder. But again, personally, I find uh, predictive value of those imaging signs to be relatively low. So this is a case, uh, and I'll let you form your own decisions. We see imaging during uh, first 60 minutes. We see delayed images, and then we see an ultrasound with a technologist note that the patient was tender, although the pain medicines were given. So is this acute cholecystitis? 
chronic cholecystitis or no cholecystitis. All right. I'm sure everybody has come up with the right answer, which of course was chronic cholecystitis with focal acute cholecystitis with single erosion. And this is a quote from pathology report uh, that indeed diagnosed acute cholecystitis based on a single erosion. In this particular case, we don't see gallbladder during the first hour, but we do see gallbladder at four hours. Um, we don't see uh, bowel, so theoretically we should have said that there is no acute cholecystitis. The patient did go on to surgery and you see the diagnosis, so make your own judgments based on this case. Okay, uh, Syncolite uh, is a very useful radiopharmaceutical. Uh, uh, Syncolite can be administered to the patient to empty the gallbladder in cases of prolonged fasting. So for patients in ICU that have not eaten for days, syncolite is quite, quite helpful. Um, additionally, in patients with suspected uh, sphincter body dysfunction, syncolite can be used uh, to increase the accuracy. Syncolite can also be used to uh, calculate gallbladder ejection fraction. Uh, false negatives in hepatobiliary imaging, again, uh, numerous. Uh, you can easily have a bowel loop that uh, simulates uh, gallbladder appearance. Uh, and uh, again, almost uh, these scans are prone to significant dysfunction, uh, to significant artifacts and issues. False positive can be pr uh, produced by insufficient fasting or excessively long fasting, uh, particularly in ICU patients. So, uh, not simple, so we should really be familiar with clinical circumstances and what's been going on with the patient's eating. Okay, so let's look at this case and tell me what is going on. So we have imaging acquired uh, initially at, with 10 minutes per uh, image, and subsequently we have delays up to four hours. So what do what is going on in these images? Okay. So let's talk, let's discuss. So we see relatively quick tracer clearance from the blood pool into the liver, and subsequently the liver just does not uh, excrete tracer into the biliary system, gallbladder, or bowel. On the delayed images, we see some tracer activity in the pelvis, and this is probably urinary bladder due to the break, breakdown of radiopharmaceutical and subsequent uh, excretion of the technetium via renal route. So the differential diagnosis in non-visualization of uh, anything other than the liver is uh, intrahepatic cholestasis, uh, CBD obstruction, um, and uh, <clears throat> or significant liver dysfunction. So when we see a prompt tracer uptake by the liver, we generally uh, become more suspicious of CBD obstruction. However, if there is a prolonged uh, tracer persistence in the blood pool, we start to suspect liver dysfunction or intrahepatic cholestasis as the underlying cause. Okay, so let's look at this case. We see uh, no gallbladder at um, 60 minutes. We perform three hour delayed images. We still see most of the tracer in the liver. We see some faint visualization of CBD and bowel. So is this acute cholecystitis? Yes or no? So in this particular case, uh, we should have said uh, that this patient does have acute cholecystitis. However, if we look at the images, the actual true cause in this particular case is uh, cholecystitis with multiple stones. So by convention, we should have seen nothing and uh, CBD should have been obstructed. So take everything with a little bit of grain of salt. So in this particular case, we could have easily overdiagnosed and it is fortunate that we did have MRC, uh, MRCP. Okay, so what is going on in this case? I mean, this is classic nuclear medicine. We just see blobs. I mean, this really calls for a beer to assist with interpretation. All right, so uh, in the clinical medicine, the answer is always to do delays. So we have 90 minutes, two hours, and four hours. And again, we just see tracer all over the place. So helpful or not? All right, 
So the answer is, this is a typical appearance of severe hepatic dysfunction. So there is persistent blood pool activity, and there is really virtually, no, uh, there's relatively poor tracer uptake by the liver and no tracer clearance. If the bilirubin is above 15, there is no point of doing hepatobiliary scintigraphy. The liver will not excrete the tracer. And if the bilirubin is not quite 15, again, you know, the scans could be quite, quite challenging. Okay, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about gallbladder dysfunction. So I remember in the remote past when we didn't have guidelines as poor as they are, it was really popular to take out gallbladder for any pain because clearly the patient had gallbladder dysfunction. And usually it would not help the pain. So this called for development of hepatobiliary scintigraphy to calculate gallbladder ejection fraction. So this is done uh, by filling the gallbladder uh, for an hour or less, depending how long it takes, with the usual hepatobiliary images, and then injecting syncolide and calculating ejection based on activity before and after with a relatively simple formula. And this is how this is done. So this patient, uh, images on the top, the gallbladder is filled with the usual protocol, and at 35 minutes, pretty full, so the patient uh, undergoes CCK infusion and we calculate an EF and we see in this particular patient at 30 minutes ejection fraction is 66% which looks relatively normal. Uh, so the guidelines uh, in the, as usual in nuclear medicine are quite well researched and these are all of the studies that have looked at gallbladder ejection fraction and various CCK infusion protocols and the last image in each line is the number of patients so as we see, uh, these are normal subjects. So, uh, and the numbers of normal subjects range from six to 60. So you can see clearly these are very, very large studies. I'm joking. Uh, so out of those protocols, the guidelines recommend uh, infusion of two micrograms per kilogram over 60 minutes uh, to replicate the physiologic protocols. Until that, it was more common to just push it with a syringe and based on my personal recollection, gallbladder dysfunction was a lot more common. Probably what happened is quick injection would induce a spasm uh, rather than mimic a physiologic excretion, uh, secretion of uh, syncolide. And the threshold value for this type of protocol is 38% at 60 minutes. Certainly if the gallbladder is, uh, empties much faster, uh, that should be sufficient. Now, uh, effective how effective this is a diagnosis of chronic cholecystitis is not entirely clear but this is much better than the uh, previous uh, wild west uh, of just symptomatic treatment or cck or rapid cck infusion so i do find this has significantly reduced the number of unnecessary cholecystectomies okay so this is how the protocol usually looks like again gallbladder is filled, CCK is infused over 60 minutes, and the answer is gallbladder dysfunction at 60 minutes, the ejection fraction is 29%, so it may be reasonable to perform cholecystectomy to treat the symptoms if the patient is symptomatic. Okay, in another case, the gallbladder looks relatively normal on ultrasound. Uh, the gallbladder is filled over 39 minutes, and then CCK is infused over 60 minutes and the gallbladder ejection fraction is negative 34 percent so this is this is quite abnormal essentially the gallbladder is in, uh, ignoring uh, syncolide and uh, this patient does have gallbladder dysfunction despite completely normal ultrasound appearance okay other indications for hepatobiliary scintigraphy is diagnosis of biliary leak biliary atresia uh, duodenogastric reflux, although again, this is a questionable entity, and also diagnosis of post colostectomy sphincter of Adi dysfunction. In kids, uh, the patients may be pre treated uh, with phenobarbital or ursodeoxalic acid. All you really should remember is uh, ursodeoxalic acid pre treatment is shorter in comparison to uh, phenobarbital and it does not have sedative effects okay so this is a patient after cholecystectomy patient is not doing well 
CT is demonstrating large amount of ascites. So he had a bill interface performed to evaluate for a leak. So does this patient have a leak or not? I'll let you look at the images for a few seconds. And the answer is no. There is no leak. We see tracer clearance into the biliary tree and subsequently bow and no activity where we don't expect it. So the ascites did not represent biliary leak. Okay, how about this patient? The patient is not doing well after cholecystectomy. And these are the images after one hour. We see all of the tracers in the liver and then we see nothing else. Is this normal, abnormal, or what? And the correct answer is quite abnormal. And we see MRCP images uh, and MR images. And I particularly encourage you to look at the Fiesta because uh, the MRCP is confusing, T2s are confusing, but I think Fiestas provide quite a clear answer. Uh, of what happened in this patient, the surgeon actually clipped the uh, CBD in the right lower quadrant. You can see a ton of clips that appear to be crossing CBD. So uh, the patient had to undergo hepatic uh, jejunostomy to bypass the clipped, uh, clipped uh, common bile duct to allow biliary drainage. So no tracer clearance during 60 minutes is quite abnormal under the circumstances. Okay. So this is another patient. Uh, this patient had hepatic jejunostomy, and there's a clinical suspicion of biliary leak. What is going on? Do you think that the patient has a leak or not? All right. I'm going to let you look for, uh, at the images for a few seconds, and now we will go on to, of course, delayed images. So again, the question is leak or no leak? It's like almost Shakespearean to be or not to be, the leak or no leak. Okay, well, uh, after that, at the end of the study, we also took the bandages of the patient's wound and imaged them, and the bandages were quite bright, so this patient actually did have a leak. And if you look closely in the midline of the delayed images, you see this vertical line, and the line actually was an incision, so the bile was leaking. Uh, from the CBD, from the surgical anastomosis into the wound. And it is actually quite hard to see on the HIDA scan, but really, really easy to see on the image of the patient's bandage. Okay, uh, this is another example where we see a patient that undergoes uh, cholecystectomy for right upper quadrant pain, but the pain actually gets worse. So this is an image of MRCP. So the options are the patient has choledocolithiasis, incisional hernia, pancreatitis, cholangiocarcinoma, sphincter of otospasm, or I want to specialize in negative DVT studies. So the patient undergoes uh, hepatobiliary scintigraphy, and what we see is liver does clear the tracer into the CBD. However, there is a relatively de relative delay before we see the uh, bowel, and the tracer persists in the CBD. And this is characteristic of sphincter of Audi dysfunction, which was probably the underlying cause of the right upper quadrant pain and not gallbladder disease. So, of course, uh, once you remove the gallbladder reservoir, this pain tends to get worse. So, uh, in those circumstances, usually there is a high clinical suspicion of sphincter of body dysfunction, so this can be diagnosed. However, uh, hepatobiliary skin can be quite helpful. There is a variety of clinical score systems that were proposed, but I don't think any of them are that good. So as long as you see this persistent uh, tracer retention within the CBD with delayed bowel clearance, you can diagnose sphincter of body dysfunction in post cholecystectomy patient. Okay, uh, you have survived. Now to summarize this lecture, uh, fasting is very important. The target fasting is two to six hours. Prolonged fasting um, can result in non-filling of the gallbladder because it's already full with uh, bile. So you may need to pre-treat with syncolite to empty the gallbladder prior to the scan. Typical dose is three to five millicuries of disophenin or mybrophenin. Mybrophenin is preferred 
uh, especially in patients with liver dysfunction. General protocol is imaging for one hour with three to four hour delays if the gallbladder is not visualized or 30 to 60 minutes delay if the morphine is administered. If the gallbladder is seen, uh, the scan can be stopped. Uh, we can conclusively exclude CBD obstruction or cystic duct obstruction. Additional views can be quite helpful to make sure that we actually see the gallbladder. CBD obstruction is highly unlikely once the gallbladder is visualized, although uh, there are always exceptions. And uh, when we suspect chronic cholecystitis, uh, the characteristic is gallbladder visualization after an hour. Uh, we are much better at diagnosing gallbladder dysfunction that should be diagnosed with ejection fraction of less than 38% with CCK infusion over one hour. Thank you very much for your attention.